it's become easier to imagine a world where the line between science fiction and reality starts to blur. With today's tech, the dreams of yesterday are starting to become the achievements of today. This video will discuss some of the most incredible engineering works that can make deep space travel a reality for mankind. First, we'll talk about the Dream Chaser space plane because it is a marvel of engineering and has been a decade in the making. Just look at how sleek and resilient this vessel is, designed to glide through space and return to Earth. We're also going to tell you some of the most fascinating aspects about Starship's third flight test. And finally, we'll run through the difficulties facing Europe's Vega rocket. Let's start with the Dream Chaser and some of its ridiculously good aspects. For those who haven't heard about it before, Dream Chaser is essentially a space plane that is set to launch in early 2024. Resembling a small shuttle, the orbiter and its shooting star cargo module are wrapping up final preparations at Ohio Neil Armstrong Testing Facility. It was back on November 30th when Sierra Space announced the vehicle's arrival, and that marked a very important phase in the last series of tests for this vehicle. That's because it has been under development since 2010, and after nearly 14 years, the vehicle will be given the green light to travel to space. For this purpose, the Neil Armstrong Testing Facility is NASA's proving ground, ensuring prototype vehicles can endure the demanding journey of space travel. This includes circumstances faced during takeoff as well as the intense heat of reentry. The facility covers 6,400 acres and has some of the most advanced simulation equipment in the world. This is needed to see if a new spacecraft is ready to go into orbit. The Tenacity Cargo variant, which is almost 30 feet long, and the Shooting Star Cargo module, which is 15 feet long, will be set up so that Dream Chaser is ready to launch. This pair will be put through a number of rounds of environmental testing in a thermal vacuum chamber and a mechanical vibration facility. This building is basically a big shaker table that imitates the forces that a spacecraft faces when it is launched. If Dream Chaser and its companion module pass these hard tests, the next step is to carefully check the unmanned cargo and get it ready to be put inside a fairing which will get it ready for launch. And at that point, we'll almost be ready to see Dream Chaser take off into the sky. The idea for Dream Chaser came up in 2004, a long time before the first shuttles were taken out of service. Soon after Sierra Space joined the group, the Dream Chaser idea was changed into a more modern alternative to the old shuttles. Since 2012, Sierra Space and its partners have been working hard to build, test, and improve what we now call the Dream Chaser, a very strong space plane. There is also a cargo version and a crew version of this space plane. It has thermal tiles that are lighter, stronger, and more technologically advanced than those on the shuttles. It also has flexible modules that can be attached to the back of the craft and can be expanded to make a large living space or extra space for cargo. The Shooting Star is one of these modules. It can carry a variety of cargo and has solar panels that can be deployed for extra power on cargo missions. Dream Chaser and its modules are both made to fit inside a standard 5 meter fairing, which is a size that works with most heavy lift rockets. This means that they can be used with a variety of launch vehicles. NASA specifically asked for this design to be flexible so that there would be backups and a range of launch options. Dream Chaser was supposed to be launched for the first time on ULA's new Vulcan rocket, but both projects were held up and the launch was moved back. It has been hard to work on the Blue Origin Vulcan rocket and its BE-4 engines, but Dream Chaser's development, especially its advanced thermal tiles, has been so difficult that it deserves its own full discussion. Interestingly, putting in the new thermal tiles on Dream Chaser was a long process that took years to finish. This took a long time because the team didn't know how to use the tiles and they were very complicated. 
which had a big effect on how long it took to build the first vehicle, which they named Tenacity. Luckily, this delay happened almost exactly at the same time as the first launch of both the Vulcan rocket and the Dream Chaser. Vulcan's first flight was delayed because of problems with the ground systems, and it was planned to happen around January 8. A cargo mission is planned for its first launch, which should happen between January and March 2024. It will be attached to the new Centaur upper stage of the Vulcan rocket, along with its shooting star module. The goal is to get it into an orbit that crosses the International Space Station. There will be a carefully planned six-hour trip, a cargo exchange, and then both vehicles will come back to Earth. The Dream Chaser will be guided back to Kennedy Space Center and land smoothly on the runway. The Shooting Star, which was carrying trash from the International Space Station, will break apart in the atmosphere. At the moment, the Shooting Star is meant to be thrown away, but Sierra is looking into the possibility of an inflatable heat shield that could let future versions of the ship parachute back to Earth and be used again. Sierra plans to use the disposable Shooting Star module for at least the first 30 launches, and they are planning to set up a production line to keep up with this rate. Meanwhile, SpaceX is preparing their launch site at Boca Chica, Texas, for the next test flight of their Starship Super Heavy rocket. Recent information from NASA has revealed the objective of this third test flight, the first ever propellant transfer test. This test is crucial as refueling in orbit from one starship to another significantly extends mission range and fulfills one of NASA's prerequisites for approving the human landing system variant of the starship for lunar missions. With a tentative launch date of 2025 for the Artemis 3 Starship mission, SpaceX is under pressure to complete all necessary testing for certification. SpaceX is known for their rapid pace, but this test requires many elements to align. The audience at a talk given by NASA's Deputy Administrator for their Moon to Mars program on December 4th was surprised to learn that the upcoming Starship flight will include a propellant transfer demonstration. While SpaceX is efficient, they face real challenges, especially considering the ongoing FAA investigation into the explosive conclusion of their previous tests last November. The upcoming third test flight, potentially just a few weeks away and with only one launch pad, raises questions about how SpaceX will manage to execute such a complex task as a propellant transfer. NASA spokesperson Jimmy Russell recently provided insights on the upcoming Starship test in an interview with the news outlet Ars Technica. Jimmy explained that NASA and SpaceX are considering various approaches for the propellant transfer demonstration during an integrated test flight of the Starship and Super Heavy rocket. However, he emphasized that no final decisions regarding the timing have been made. Jimmy detailed that the initial test will involve an internal transfer of about 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between two tanks inside the Starship, following stage separation. This approach, conceived in 2020, represents a logical first step. It eliminates the need for a second spacecraft and focuses on testing the internal systems, like valves and actuators, crucial for safely maneuvering cryogenic fuel in microgravity. While this test may not occur immediately, Jimmy clarified that it wouldn't involve two starships docking in orbit, which is the ultimate goal of these tests. This final step will demonstrate Starship's capability for full-scale fuel transfer. SpaceX's strategy involves gradual, incremental testing with each flight. Jimmy indicated that if the first of these propellant transfer tests is ready for the third test flight, it will still be on a smaller scale. The idea that this could happen in the next launch is quite astonishing, even with a more modest scope. However, SpaceX has several milestones to achieve in 2024, to stay on track for the 2025 launch window for Artemis 3. 
it remains to be seen if they can execute a full flight and a propellant transfer in the upcoming test. Meanwhile, in case you haven't heard, Avio, the company behind the European Space Agency's Vega rockets, faces a significant setback. On December 4th, a source from the spaceflight news outlet European Spaceflight reported that Avio discovered the loss of two of the four fuel tanks for Vega's AVUM fourth stage in early October. This incident jeopardizes the final flight of ESA's last operational rocket. Avio faced a baffling situation when two fuel tanks for the Vega rocket's AVUM fourth stage went missing. A source close to the project revealed that the tanks had not been logged into the company's inventory system, which tracks all their launch components. This oversight made locating and understanding the fate of the tanks challenging. Eventually, they were found compressed into scrap metal at a local junkyard. It appears that during recent renovations at Avio's production facility, these untagged tanks were mistakenly identified as trashed and removed. This mishap presents a significant issue for Avio since the Vega rocket is scheduled to be decommissioned after its next launch. There are no spare parts readily available for replacement. This final mission is crucial as it aims to launch Europe's Sentinel 2C Earth Observation Satellite into orbit, a task so urgent that the ESA postponed another satellite's launch for it. Understandably, there is a sense of urgency to find a solution. One potential fix involves refurbishing old fuel tanks used by the AVUM's qualification tests back in 2012. However, getting these tanks flight ready again is a daunting task to say the least. Another risky alternative is to adapt tanks from Vega's newer AVUM Plus fourth stage for the older version. This approach is uncertain and would require months of work to even attempt. The safest yet delayed option is to wait for the Vega C rocket to become operational, which is not expected until late 2024, due to ongoing modifications after a failure in its second flight last year caused by a defective engine nozzle. None of these solutions are ideal, and the delay in launching an important scientific research platform is frustrating. It's a disappointing end to Vega's nearly 12-year service. This experience is a reminder for Avio of the importance of meticulous inventory management. That's it from our side with this video. For similar content, don't forget to check out some of our other videos on your screen. Until then, goodbye.